Joshua Snyder, Joshua Snyder, Joshua Snyder, Joshua, 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 uh, my day job is I work at a comedy club, and if you're not familiar with uh, what a comedy club is, it's basically a room in which you uh, take a bunch of people, put them together, and uh, you throw jokes at them. And the problem is, right now we're living in a, uh, a in case you haven't heard, a global pandemic, where if you put a bunch of people together in a room, uh, they will die. So... There's a bit of a that's thrown a wrench in in uh, live performance. There's been you know there's a fork in the road. Uh, maybe that's an understatement. It's more like there is a nuclear bomb in the road, and really uh, it's not the difference between choosing between run ro- one road and another road. It's just oh the, there's a, a bomb on the road, and now that road is ha- is no longer there because you're on the side of a cliff. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a lot of possible uh, radiation and scar. Yeah, that's that. That's that's kind of where I'm at right now. Flipping out. We uh, just finished. We're doing all the shows virtually. We're doing the shows via Zoom, and uh, I, which I zo- doing Zoom, doing comedy over Zoom. I actually like it. Dare I say it? There's been a, I think a lot of comedians have, you know, dismissed it or they they don't like it. I, I like doing it. I recognize that it is not the same as performing it live. Uh, but I, I guess I'm, I'm more. I, I, I don't know. Somehow I'm just okay with it. Uh, oh, actually, I know why I'm okay with it because I'm so uh, emotionally. Uh, uh, incapable of opening up with other people that the more distance there is between me and other people the better so it's you know it, this might have worked in my favor <laughs> no it has not worked in my favor I assure you but the big area of fear in my mind the, the big thing that I'm struggling with is the notion of uncertainty when can we open the club again for physical shows when will the vaccine be out? How long will it take to get everyone to have the vaccine? And then, oh yes, right. Uh, will I die? <laughs> that that other one, that other issue too. So there's all this uncertainty, and I'm reminded of when I, I had a conversation with a really great comedian named Adam Ferrara, who has also has a podcast. His podcast way more successful than my podcast. I recommend that you listen to his podcast. Uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. And he said that you've got to get to the point where you are comfortable living in uncertainty. And that's a brilliant notion. And I feel like uh, a part of me wants to achieve that, to get to the point where I am comfortable being uh, uh, unsure, comfortable being uncertain. But then the other part of me, that is the Jewish part of me, that is possibly 100% of me, would rather go down screaming. (laughs) Uh, uh, There's this uh, documentary out. It was out in 2013, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of quoting from it, uh, and I want to make sure I get the name of it right. Uh, it's called uh, When Jews Were Funny, and it's tracing the history of Jewish comedians. And one of the things they said in this documentary is that there's a part of the Jewish culture we love to complain. And here's what, I, here's what we're, I'm going to try. I want to achieve enlightenment. I want to get to the point where I'm okay with uncertainty. Uh, But whereas I would say a Buddhist would meditate 
and try to get to a place where they were no longer thinking or they were uh, not bothered by their thoughts and they were at once aware of their connection to the overall oneness of the universe and yet at the same time aware of the duality that they are a separation from that and both exist at the same time. I want to get to that same place by uh, whining and complaining about everything and everyone around me. And just get to the point where I'm whining so much and complaining so much, one day just it all goes white and I'm floating in a bubble next to Hugh Jackman in his character in that movie, The Fountain. That's really, that's how I'd like to attack this. What do you think? I just have this image of the Buddha and the rabbi. They're sitting next to each other, and the Buddha is meditating, try, trying to find that, that oneness, realizing that we are all connected, realizing that this constant cycle of rebirth is occurring because we are attached to the fruit of our actions, and if we can release ourselves from the fruit of our actions and release ourselves from our desires, then we can truly be free and achieve the samsara and next to him, the rabbi is going, there's, there's no taste in the soup. Why do we keep coming to this restaurant? The soup is terrible. There's, I mean, I could put salt in it, but that's going to, my cholesterol is already in trouble. Ugh. I gewalt the soup. I am, uh, here's the other thing I, I want to confess. I decided two weeks ago that I am a content creator. Now, first of all, I hate that term, content creator, because it doesn't mean anything. It's not specific. I create content. That's, I mean, content is anything. I can take my phone, turn on the camera, and proceed to punch myself in the face with it for 30 seconds. And I got to say, as I'm describing that, that would probably get more views than all the jokes and the sketches that I've been trying to write and put out there. So I hate the term content creator, but that is becoming a term now. That's a job. They did not have that job during uh, the Middle Ages that I'm aware of. I feel like the person who said, in the Middle Ages, if somebody said, you know, I, uh, I'm a content creator. I feel like they would have been immediately flogged. They would have been immediately beaten. <laughs> I, and I guess also, I don't know, it just, I, I, it's one of those other things, maybe this is the other thing too. And I, I have the same neuroses with stand-up comedy, which is, when can I tell myself I'm a comedian? And when can I tell other people I'm a comedian? Because th th it's a paradox. Because the irony is, is that is when I'm confident about it and I say, yeah, I'm a comedian, then I, I, sort of, I am a comedian. But it's not like being a doctor or a lawyer where you go through a process, you get a degree, and they're like, okay, now you're a doctor. I mean, maybe, maybe for both comedians and con content creators, maybe there needs to be a, a, you know, something. You know what? It would, it would, it would ease my neuroses if Jerry Seinfeld could sign something saying, "Okay, you're a comedian." If I could get uh, a uh, a signed thing from Seinfeld, uh, yes, but that's uh, that's not how it works. I just. Uh, I think the, actually the way that it works is that I just start creating content, putting it out there, and then one day, hopefully, somebody says, hey, you, I guess you're a content creator. And I go, yeah, all right, I guess I am. And then they say, well, you know, that's, that was funny. And I go, okay, thank you. And then uh, I uh, uh, get uh, uh, a job uh, measuring slacks, and that's... You know, and then die lonely and unfulfilled. So, I, I, yeah, living in uncertainty. That's, that's how I'm handling it. 
uh, or as I like to call it, screaming in uncertainty. There we go. JoshCast is brought to you by 95% Security Systems. Our state-of-the-art home security systems are designed to protect you from all intruders, except for the ones who are really motivated enough to break in and kill you in your sleep. Other security companies make promises they can't keep, but we at 95% Security Systems believe that honesty is the best policy, unlike the 5% of the people who will ignore the security system, break in, and steal everything you own, all remotely. The fact is, there are no guarantees in life, and nothing is 100%. And by the way, if you are rich enough to afford a security system in the first place, you are quickly becoming a tiny minority in a failed state of a country, and there's a 5% chance you may soon find yourselves being overwhelmed in a revolution rivaling the reign of terror. But there's a 95% chance things will be just fine. 95% security systems, because there probably isn't a god. What happened? Where, where am I? I seem to be tied up. Batman, do you read? Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, does anyone read? This is Green Arrow. I repeat, this is Green Arrow. Chronomaster has thrown me back into time. Back, presumably, into the Dark Ages, and I am now tied up on a tree. Not able to get out. If you can read me, Batman, can you, can anyone read me? Uh-oh. Uh, oh boy. Someone's approaching. Oh, oh boy. Hey there. Hi. Hi. Hey, I, uh, so, uh, I'm Robin Hood. Uh, who are you? Yeah, I, uh, about that. I'm, uh, look, I'm, I'm, a I'm a time traveler from the future. Uh, my name is, uh, uh Green Arrow. And, uh, there's a, a villain that I've got to catch. And I, he's running around somewhere. And I, I really need you to untie me so I can catch him and bring him back into my time. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but I really need you to believe me. Well, Green Arrow... I can tell you're a man of great character. And I can tell that you are a hero, and I believe you. And I will untie you, and I will help you to fight evil. But before I do that, I just can't help but notice some striking similarities between how you are dressed and how I am dressed. And I just want to inquire as to um, whether or not there might be some, uh, uh, dare I say, plagiarism going on here. Look, all right, I'm, 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 a, I'm a wealthy uh, businessman, and I uh, was really inspired by your stories because, you, you know, you're a legend in my time. And so I, you know, as an homage to you, created this outfit, and uh, I, I fight crime using a bow and arrow, and I, you know, I, my big thing is to basically rob from the rich and give to the poor. So, I, it, it's out of love. It is out of love that I'm doing this. You know, you, you've been dead for hundreds of years, and we're a legend. So, you know, if, 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 if you'd have been alive, obviously, I would have, I would have made a call, but you know, you, you were, you've been gone for hundreds of years. It was, uh, you know, th this is, this is all done out of love. That, that's what it is. Uh-huh. It's out of love. Out of love. Okay, so let me see if I can get this straight. You rob for the rich and you give to the poor just like me. You fight evil just like me. You use bow and arrow just like me. You wear all green just like me. You wear the, the pointy hat thing just like me. You do everything just like me, except you don't call yourself Robin Hood. Well, you know, I, I, I wanted to be, you know, uh, uh, my own thing. And I have a goatee. You don't have a goatee. I have a goatee. You, you don't have a goatee. I've had a goatee at times. I, uh, a lot of times I've had a goatee. I just, you happen to catch me at a point where I 
I'm a little clean shaven, but I've I've had the goatee. That's that you're not going to get away with that. Well, I, I, I you know I, I wanted I I, I didn't want to you know I, I was inspired by Robin Hood, but I didn't want to be Robin Hood. I wanted to be my own person. Yes, but there's nothing about you that is anything different than me. You are a copy of me. So either you need to call yourself Robin Hood and just go with it, and I don't know, pay me a little something maybe, uh, or you need to uh, change it up enough so that, I mean, there's got to be something different. Oh, oh, here's what's different. Here's what's different. So I shoot arrows, right? So you just shot normal arrows. But my arrows, you know, one arrow, like it turns into a fist and it, it punches the guy in the face. And then another arrow turns into a, a little buzz saw. And that way it can, it can saw through things. And uh, oh, one arrow, like the tip of it, is, it has like, a, like an exploding device. And, and so that, that's, that's different than you. Uh, yeah, no, no, not, not, that's, that's not enough. That's just, that's just not enough. I mean, listen, I mean, they're, they're, you know, the, 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 there are a few lawyers, I think, right now in our, even if there aren't lawyers in my era, I would win this case. You know this, right? Yes, yes, I, I know. I know, but can, we've really got bigger issues right now. Like the whole space-time continuum is about to fall in on itself. Can we please? Well, I, I just, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, you're, either you call yourself Robin Hood and you copy me 100% or you call yourself something else. And if you're inspired by me, I don't know, maybe at least throw on a cape, do something a little bit different. This is ridiculous. Look, I, I can you just, just let me down. Just let me down. Oh, ooh, I've got it. Wait a minute. I've got it. You were inspired by me. Uh, so that means if I change who I am now, it will change what you do in the future. Oh, I love this. Okay, okay. I, I love this. All right. Wh I don't know what you're thinking. Robin Hood, please. I don't know what you're thinking, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Are you talking to me or are you talking to yourself? All right, Robin Hood, please. Please. Just let me down from this and... No, 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 no. Wait. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to... I'm going to take off one shoe and one sock. So I'm only going to be wearing one shoe now. So that'll, that'll be a thing you'll have to do. Oh, oh, it's happening to you. Look, look. It's happening to you. Oh, this is great. Where'd, where'd my shoe go? Huh. Oh, no. This is not good. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to write, I'm going to write um, poop on, on my shirt. I'm writing poop on my shirt. And I'm never going to explain why. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to be, and, and I'm, I'm not going to call myself Robin Hood anymore. I'm going to call myself the nice guy who has poop written on his shirt. Please, please don't do this. Uh, good. I am now the nice guy who has poop written on his shirt. That's my thing, everybody. That's my thing, Sherwood Forest. I'm the nice guy who has poop written on his shirt and only wears one shoe, which means my my bare foot is going to be constantly stepping in things, and I'm probably going to get splinters. It's going to be, yeah, but I'm the nice guy who has poop written on his shirt. That's my thing, everybody. That's my thing. We got here as soon as we could. Step away from him. Oh, Batman, thank God. Thank God. This Robin Hood was about to... Uh, was, I don't know. I was about to make some big mistakes. Are you okay? Nice guy who has anything written on, written as poop on his shirt. What? Sorry about that. I'm a little flabbergasted by the time travel. Are you okay? Nice guy who has poop written on his shirt. No, that's not my name. I'm the Green Arrow. No. You are the nice guy who has poop written on his shirt. See? There's poop written on your shirt. Are you okay? No. No. I'm... I'm not okay. I'm, I'm not okay. This is the end of the podcast. The end of the podcast. I hope you liked the podcast. I hope you liked the podcast. Now go out there and watch Babylon 5. It's written by J. Michael Straczynski. Because the more people watch this awesome show, the more chances that there will be. 
to have a reboot. Also written by J. Michael Straczynski. So go out there and watch Babylon 5 and listen to my podcast, which will come on in a couple of days again. I'm going to sing this little bit because I'm a little obsessive compulsive and I want to make sure that the note that I end on is higher than the note I ended on before. There, there it is. I feel better.